Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're about to dive into a fascinating topic that doesn't get much attention, Muslims in Vietnam. Now you might be thinking, Muslims in Vietnam? Really? Yep, it's a thing, and it's a pretty interesting story. In this video, we're going to take you on a journey through time and across Vietnam to explore the Muslim community there. We'll start way back in history, looking at how Islam first arrived in Vietnam. Then we'll crunch some numbers to see just how many Muslims are in Vietnam today. We'll also peek into their daily lives, check out where they're mostly living, and what they're up to. But it's not all smooth sailing, so we'll also talk about some of the challenges they face. And finally, we'll tackle the big question, is there Islamophobia in Vietnam? So buckle up, folks. Whether you're a history buff, a culture enthusiast, or just curious about different communities around the world, this video's got something for you. Let's get started. Let's start with the history of Islam in Vietnam. It's a fascinating journey that spans over a thousand years. Islam first came to Vietnam in the 9th century. Picture this, Arab and Persian traders, their ships laden with exotic goods, sailing along the coast of what we now call Vietnam. These weren't just quick pit stops. Some of these traders settled down, married local women, and started building communities. Now. The real turning point came with the Champa Kingdom. The Chams, who ruled parts of central and southern Vietnam from about the 2nd to the 17th century, were the first major group to embrace Islam in a big way. It's believed that Islam really took hold among the Chams around the 11th century. There's this interesting story about a Cham king named Che Bong Nga. Legend has it that he converted to Islam after marrying a Muslim princess from Malacca. Whether that's true or not, we do know that Islam spread pretty quickly among the Cham elite after that. But here's the thing. The spread of Islam in Vietnam wasn't always smooth sailing. When the Vietnamese pushed southward and eventually conquered the Champa Kingdom in the 17th century, many Muslim Chams fled to Cambodia. Those who stayed behind often faced pressure to assimilate into Vietnamese culture. Fast forward to the 19th century, and we see a new wave of Muslim immigrants. This time, it was Indonesian and Malaysian Muslims, many of them traders or laborers, settling in the Mekong Delta region. They brought their own flavors of Islamic practice, adding to the diversity of Vietnam's Muslim community. During the French colonial period, which lasted from the late 19th century to the mid 20th century, Muslims in Vietnam experienced a mix of tolerance and control. The French didn't actively suppress Islam, but they did keep a close eye on religious activities. After Vietnam gained independence and then reunified in 1975, the government's approach to religion, including Islam, went through some changes. Initially, there were restrictions on religious practices, but over time, the policy has become more relaxed. So when you look at the Muslim community in Vietnam today, you're seeing the result of this long, complex history. You've got the descendants of those early Arab and Persian traders, the Cham Muslims, with their unique blend of Islamic and Cham traditions and the more recent arrivals from other parts of Southeast Asia. It's like a living tapestry of Islamic history in Southeast Asia. Let us take a look at the numbers and demographics of Muslims in Vietnam. This is where things get a bit tricky because getting precise figures isn't always easy. According to recent surveys and estimates, Muslims make up a tiny fraction of Vietnam's population. We're talking less than 0.1%. Now in a country of about 97 million people, that translates to somewhere between 70,000 to 80,000 Muslims. Some sources put the number as high as 100,000, but that's probably on the optimistic side. Now, here's where it gets interesting. When we break down these numbers, we find that the vast majority of Muslims in Vietnam are Sunni. We're talking like 99% Sunni. The Shia community is incredibly small, probably numbering only a few hundred at most and they're mainly concentrated in Ho Chi Minh City. But wait, there's more to this story. A significant portion of Vietnam's Muslims, about 40,000 to 50,000, are ethnic Cham. Remember those Cham people I mentioned earlier? Yeah, they make up the largest group of Muslims in the country. The rest are a mix of other ethnic groups, including some ethnic Vietnamese converts and immigrants from other Muslim countries. Now, it's important to note that not all Cham people are Muslim. Some practice a form of Hinduism, while others have converted to Christianity or follow traditional Cham religions. 
Among the Muslim Cham, most follow the Sunni Shafi'i school of jurisprudence, which is common in Southeast Asia. Here's another interesting tidbit. The Muslim population isn't evenly distributed across Vietnam. The majority are concentrated in the South, particularly in Anjiang province in the Mekong Delta and in Ho Chi Minh City. You'll also find significant Muslim communities in Ninh Thuan and Binh Thuan provinces in the South Central Coast, which are traditional Cham areas. Now, when we look at these numbers in context, it's clear that Muslims are a very small minority in Vietnam. Buddhism is the largest religion, followed by Christianity, and a significant portion of the population identifies as having no religion or following traditional Vietnamese folk religions. It's worth mentioning that these numbers can fluctuate a bit. There's some natural population growth within the Muslim community, but it's balanced out by factors like assimilation and, in some cases, emigration. The Vietnamese government has been conducting more detailed surveys in recent years, so we might get more precise figures in the future. So, in a nutshell, we're looking at a small but diverse Muslim community in Vietnam, predominantly Sunni, with deep historical roots but facing the challenges of being a tiny minority in a largely non-Muslim country. It's a fascinating demographic situation, don't you think? All right, let's dive into the daily lives of Muslims in Vietnam. It's a pretty interesting mix of maintaining Islamic traditions while navigating life in a predominantly non-Muslim society. So as I mentioned before, most Muslims in Vietnam are concentrated in the South, particularly in Anjiang province and Ho Chi Minh city. You'll also find communities in the central coastal areas, especially among the Cham people. Their daily activities? Well, it's a blend of work, faith, and community life. Many Muslims in Vietnam work in trades or run small businesses. In the cities, you might find them operating restaurants, particularly those serving halal food or working in various service industries. In rural areas, especially in the Mekong Delta, many are involved in agriculture, fishing, or handicrafts. The Cham Muslims often have a reputation for being skilled weavers and artisans. Now, when it comes to religious practices, they try to maintain Islamic traditions as much as possible. Daily prayers are important, but it can be challenging to find appropriate places to pray, especially in areas without mosques. Some workplaces might provide prayer rooms, but it's not as common as in Muslim-majority countries. Fridays are particularly important with many Muslims trying to attend Friday prayers at the mosque. In Ho Chi Minh City, you'll see the Jamia al Musulman Mosque bustling with activity on Fridays. It's not just about prayer, it's also a chance for the community to come together. Ramadan is a big deal, of course. Muslims in Vietnam do fast during this month, but it can be tough when you're surrounded by non-Muslims who are eating and drinking as usual. Some Islamic centers and mosques organize communal iftars, breaking of the fast, which are important social events for the community. Education is another aspect of daily life. While there are a few Islamic schools, they're limited in number. Many Muslim children attend regular Vietnamese schools and receive religious education at home or in after-school programs at the mosque. One interesting thing about Muslim life in Vietnam is the effort to maintain halal dietary practices. In cities like Ho Chi Minh City, you can find halal restaurants and shops, but in other areas, it can be more challenging. Some Muslims resort to vegetarian options when halal meat isn't available. Community life is really important for Vietnamese Muslims. They often gather for religious festivals, weddings, and other celebrations. These events are crucial for maintaining their cultural identity and passing on traditions to younger generations. Speaking of which, there's an interesting generational dynamic at play. Older Muslims often strive to maintain traditional practices, while younger ones are finding ways to balance their Islamic faith with modern Vietnamese society. You might see young Muslims active on social media, discussing how to be both Muslim and Vietnamese. In terms of dress, most Muslims in Vietnam don't stand out too much in their daily attire. Some women wear hijabs, especially in more conservative communities, but it's not universal. Men might wear skull caps, particularly for prayers or religious events. So yeah, daily life for Muslims in Vietnam is this fascinating balancing act. They're maintaining their faith and traditions while also being part of the broader Vietnamese society. It's not always easy, but they're making it work.
you know? All right, let's get into the challenges and problems faced by the Muslim population in Vietnam. It's a complex situation, and there are definitely some hurdles they have to navigate. First off, let's talk about religious infrastructure. There's a real shortage of mosques and Islamic schools in Vietnam. We're looking at only about 40 mosques for the entire country. That's not a lot, especially when you consider how spread out the Muslim population is. This means many Muslims have to travel long distances for Friday prayers or community gatherings. It also makes it tough to provide comprehensive Islamic education for children. Another big issue is the availability of halal food. In major cities like Ho Chi Minh City, you can find halal options, but it's a different story in smaller towns or rural areas. Vietnam's cuisine is heavily pork-based, which creates challenges for Muslims trying to maintain halal diets. Some resort to vegetarian options or have to be really careful about what they eat. Then there's the challenge of preserving Islamic culture and identity. Being such a small minority in a country with a strong national culture, there's always the pressure of assimilation. Young Muslims especially often find themselves caught between their Islamic heritage and mainstream Vietnamese society. It's a balancing act that can be pretty stressful. Employment can also be an issue. While there's no official discrimination, some Muslims report difficulties finding jobs that accommodate their religious practices, like prayer times or dietary restrictions. This can limit their economic opportunities. There's also the matter of representation. With such a small population, Muslims often find it hard to have their voices heard in national discussions or to influence policies that affect them. This can lead to feelings of marginalization or being overlooked by the government. Speaking of government, while Islam is officially recognized in Vietnam, there are some restrictions on religious activities. All religious groups need to register with the government, and there are limits on proselytizing. This can sometimes create tensions, especially when it comes to organizing religious events or building new mosques. Education is another area of concern. While Muslim children can attend public schools, there's little to no Islamic content in the curriculum. This means the burden of religious education falls entirely on families and community organizations, which can be challenging. There's also the issue of maintaining connections with the global Muslim community. Travel restrictions and limited resources can make it difficult for Vietnamese Muslims to perform Hajj or study Islam abroad. This can lead to a sense of isolation from the wider Islamic world. Intermarriage is another complex issue. When Muslims marry non-Muslims, it can lead to challenges in maintaining Islamic practices in the family and passing on the faith to children. Some conservative members of the community see this as a threat to their long-term survival as a distinct group. Lastly, there's the economic aspect. Many Muslim communities, especially in rural areas, face poverty and lack of development. This can limit opportunities for education and advancement creating a cycle that's hard to break. So yeah, it's a whole mix of challenges. From preserving their faith and culture to navigating daily life in a non-Muslim society, Vietnamese Muslims face some real obstacles. But it's important to note that they're also resilient and finding ways to address these issues within their communities. It's not an easy road, but they're making their way, you know? All right, let's talk about Islamophobia in Vietnam. This is a bit of a tricky topic because the situation is quite different from what you might see in some Western countries or other parts of Asia. First off, it's important to understand that overt Islamophobia isn't really a big issue in Vietnam. You don't see organized anti-Islamic movements or widespread discrimination like you might in some other places. But that doesn't mean everything's perfect, you know? Vietnam doesn't have a history of conflict with Islamic countries, and Islam isn't seen as a major political or social threat. Most Vietnamese people simply don't have much exposure to or knowledge about Islam. This lack of familiarity can sometimes lead to misunderstandings or stereotypes, but it rarely translates into outright hostility. Now, that said, there are some challenges. Sometimes Muslims in Vietnam face what you might call soft discrimination or unconscious bias. This isn't usually because of their religion specifically, but more because they're seen as different or foreign. For example, 
Some Cham Muslims have reported feeling like they're treated as outsiders in their own country. They might face subtle prejudices or assumptions about their loyalty to Vietnam. But it's important to note that this is often more about ethnic minority status than about being Muslim specifically. There's also the issue of media representation. Islam doesn't get a lot of coverage in Vietnamese media, and when it does, it's not always accurate. Sometimes, global events involving Islamic extremism can lead to negative portrayals, which can affect how some Vietnamese people view Muslims. But again, this is more about lack of information than active hostility. In terms of government policy, there's no official anti-Islamic stance. The Vietnamese government recognizes Islam as one of the country's religions and allows Muslims to practice their faith. But like all religions in Vietnam, Islamic activities are regulated and there are restrictions on things like proselytizing. Now, here's an interesting point. Vietnam has actually been trying to improve its relations with Muslim-majority countries for economic and diplomatic reasons. This has led to some efforts to be more accommodating to Muslim visitors and residents. For example, there have been initiatives to promote halal tourism in some areas. But let's be real, there are still challenges. Some Muslims report feeling like they have to downplay their religious identity in certain situations, like at work or in school. And there can be social pressures, especially on young Muslims, to conform to mainstream Vietnamese culture. It's also worth noting that Vietnam's strong emphasis on national unity can sometimes make it difficult for minority groups, including Muslims, to assert their distinct identities. This isn't Islamophobia per se, but it can create tensions. As for organized anti-Islamic groups, I haven't found any evidence of significant ones operating in Vietnam. The country's tight control over civil society organizations makes it unlikely for such groups to form or operate openly. So, to sum it up, while Vietnam doesn't have a big problem with overt Islamophobia, Muslims do face challenges related to being a small minority in a largely homogeneous society. It's more about ignorance and lack of understanding than active hostility. The situation is complex with both positive and negative aspects. Remember, though, that experiences can vary widely among individuals and communities. Some Muslims in Vietnam might feel perfectly integrated and accepted, while others might face more difficulties. It's a nuanced situation that's still evolving as Vietnam becomes more connected to the global community. All right, folks, that's the scoop on Muslims in Vietnam. Pretty interesting stuff, right? From the ancient Cham kingdoms to the bustling mosques of modern-day Ho Chi Minh City, it's a story that spans centuries and shows just how diverse Vietnam really is. Now I hope this video gave you a new perspective on a community that often flies under the radar. Whether it's the challenges they face, the rich history they carry, or the way they're navigating life in contemporary Vietnam, there's a lot to unpack here. If you found this information valuable or just plain fascinating, why not help spread the knowledge? Hit that subscribe button to stay in the loop for more videos like this one. I'm always digging into unique stories and lesser known aspects of cultures around the world, and I'd love to have you along for the ride. Got any thoughts or experiences related to this topic? Drop them in the comments below. Maybe you visited Vietnam and noticed something I didn't mention, or perhaps you're curious about other minority groups in Southeast Asia. Your input helps shape future content, so don't be shy. Thanks for watching, and remember, understanding diverse communities like Vietnam's Muslims brings us all a little closer together. See you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.